Shrub uh, update from Andrew Gottlieb. Uh, that's, that's been delayed. And at this time, I would ask if, uh, if you have anything to, uh, anything from what you've been doing lately. Um, Can I just make an announcement? Yes. Uh, I am expecting um, George Whitefelder. I know he did have a 2 o'clock meeting. He asked for some time, both he and Sean, but Sean is actually at the REPC meeting as we speak. Mm -hmm. They were doing Thank a you, everyone. 2 o'clock conference call with the governor, apparently. and. Uh, so he's working on preparations you, for Hurricane Earl. Thank you, everybody. And um, so George is going to come down and brief you guys um, and the public on what's happening. Emergency uh, preparedness yeah, well, wise. The, the REPC has run, uh, let's see, I've got nine updates from them mm -hmm. on email. So they, yep. uh, they've been very active. And, uh, very active. And uh, even on uh, WXDK, uh, Matt Pitter is the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the. Uh, Media, yeah. the media representative for that, and uh, he has been, uh, you know, sharing information you know, with people. Yeah, and I will say, I, I spoke with Andrew this morning, and he felt they weren't quite ready to discuss kind of both aspects of the wastewater piece, both the the workshop process and the you know the litigation issue. I mentioned to him that next week has gotten a little bit muddled because the um, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute is holding a seminar on the, it's not specifically no, on the open, open cake, cake, but it's, it's the sort of broadband, broadband issue, yeah. and yeah. hold on, I think I both have expressed both. interest in going. I know that yes. I am going. Okay, that's good. And then in the afternoon, neither Maggie nor I are available since we are on the Brewster Wind Tour. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we should do is not have a meeting next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I suggested to Andrew, and Andrew thought that wasn't a bad idea, and do the discussion on the wastewater issues on the 15th. I think that uh, would be okay with me. It's fine with okay. me. Okay. So we'll I, set a time for the 15th. On the, on the 22nd, though, uh, yep. which is uh, the week after that, uh, as you know, I'm, uh, I'm participating in a, uh, a sort of Mass Municipal Association meeting that morning and I would ask that uh, we, uh, we meet at 3 o'clock because we have an important role out of the program. We're going to do the NACO dental program, so we could do that. It's okay with me. There's no assembly, assembly that day. No assembly, so we'll just have a meeting where we roll that out. Um, at and 3 take your visit at 3 sure. o'clock on the 22nd. Uh, did you have anything else on the announcement? No, I, I don't believe I do. Okay. I want to, I, I think I'd like to tell the, uh, you know, the people that are watching, we recently in the uh, Cape Cod Times, there's been some mention of, an, uh, of a, what I'd call an unfortunate incident with regard to uh, the election, um, oh. uh, uh, let's see, the election uh, activities of people who are running for assembly. And I want to take this time to say that Scott Nickerson, who has been our county clerk for almost 10 years, uh, has been doing it not because of statute, but because he's voluntarily accepted that job. And that uh, during that period of time, he's worked very hard. He's done it on a voluntary basis. And that, uh, that in this particular instance, I believe that he did everything that he could to, let's say, to, to have this as a positive outcome. Uh, so having said that, I, I want to assure the public that since Scott Nickerson is someone that is appointed by the county commissioners to be the county clerk, that, uh, you know, we, that speaking as vice chair today and speaking of, of, the, of having uh, let's see, been uh, having him part, as part of our team for some time mm -hmm. that he's always done the best that he could and that uh, uh, we have had no reason to believe that, uh, that he was anything other than top you know let's say, totally qualified to do it and that uh, after this unfortunate incident has gone past I think we've learned something from it and I want to mention that for those for those people who had, uh, let's say, who were affected by this, I've already reached out to uh, to some of them and invited them to go on political pattern, <coughs> so that uh, which is a which, you know which is a, a, a program that I run in this election cycle to give candidates an opportunity to get some visibility, and that uh, I uh, let's say I've reached out to three of them so far, and I hope to catch catch the rest of them uh, before the end of the week to give them an opportunity to put their candidacy forward to see whether or not they can salvage uh, you know, what they can and, uh, and, uh, and, say, and, say, and try to improve their, you know, their opportunity. This is certainly something that was not intentional, 
and uh, I hope that we can it's all get through it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a happier note, uh, I was uh, uh, able to uh, give a welcome to eight new members of the Workforce Board uh, that, uh, uh, that stepped forward uh, this, this week. Uh, we have uh, uh, retail uh, members of the uh, you know, NGOs, uh, members of the school community, and uh, I also want to mention that uh, that I've reached out to uh, uh, to the clans. That's the uh, Cape Library Association oh, uh, media, and the reason I reached out to them was that in in today's economy, the most important thing that we that we need to do as public officials is to provide opportunities to, to ease the access to uh, you know to the resources that we have. Right. So uh, David Augustino, who's the uh, director, and uh, I talked to Jane Hewitt uh, today with the program Power, which has been more or less my, my you know my contact with that. That we we're discussing how we can set up a template so that you know so the people who are looking for jobs don't necessarily have to travel to the three offices that you know, we we have one in Orleans. One in Hyannis and one in Falmouth, but yet you know, you know, try to make this a little bit, you know, say a little bit easier uh, to uh, you know, to get some help with that. I would point out that one of the things I found out this morning is that the reference librarians at uh, you know at Harwich and at uh, Falmouth and uh, I believe in uh, a couple of other uh, libraries, the ones that are run by the municipal, you know, by the municipalities, have been you know are aware of this problem and are, and, and, are, and are right now. As they can, but uh, you know, but they also see that something you know, needs to be, you know, more needs to be done. We've got to do everything that we can to help people get jobs. And finally, uh, uh, people might not know this, but if they attend the farmers market in Harwich, they have free Wi-Fi that's available at the farmers market. So at wow. both ends of Harwich, free at the library, them. that's right. So if you get if you're down there getting your get vegetables, you, you can uh, get on uh, DSL that's down there and. Uh, you can spend some more time, uh, you know, uh, getting healthy and, and getting stay in touch. So, uh, and uh, we've already mentioned about the QPR for uh, for high and community center. Okay. Well, I think I see George Hoytalter has shown up, and you're going to give us a briefing on Pearl. What right? are we going to do this Friday? Yeah. Uh, I just thought I'd uh, give you the update of the emergency planning efforts. Sean is at the REPC meeting right now. Uh, I believe that tomorrow there will be a executive committee meeting, and at that meeting, normally it's decided whether shelters will open up. When the latest weather report is, uh, is received, then they'll decide whether they mo want to mobilize 24 hours before anticipated landfall, uh, setting up certain shelters. And the shelters, of course, um, on your end of the cave would be NOS, and that one, however, would not be able to accommodate pets. The one, the closest one would be the tech school, which does accommodate pets, and Dennis yeah, Yarman. Dennis Yarman. Mm -hmm. So I believe they'll be discussing today possibly the mobilization movement of assets toward Nantucket, because Nantucket is in the RAPC, mm -hmm. so some things may have to be pre-positioned out there. Uh, they're still in a holding pattern since they really don't know what's what's happening with the school and it's going to track as far west as they uh, were talking about this morning. The last advice I, that I saw on the you know, on the email advice said that it, they had downgraded the category of the storm. Yeah, I believe it has been downgraded, but uh, in, in any event, I think the anticipation is possibly electricity loss. So they are going to consider opening those particular shelters first. One, because uh, the position, we believe the outer cape will probably be the place that it's going to be needed. And the second part is trying to get at least one facility that can accommodate pets. Now, this, uh, people should know that uh, this is a, would be an application of the ICS, you know, the Incident Commander System. Yes, and on top of that, overlaid on top of that, the Regional Emergency Planning Committee also serves as an umbrella organization for the incident management team, or the IMT, that opens another acronym, the MAC, the Multi-Agency Coordination Center. And what that does, if that is set up, and some of us have already called with our assignments to be at certain places this weekend, 
then what that will do is enable sort of communication with all of the communities on the Cape, particularly maybe the ones that are not affected as much, who have assets that can help those that are affected. And that's the whole purpose of the, the MAC, is to take resources where they're not as much needed and move them to where they are, and have a pretty real-time communication to know which is which, where they are, what the availability is, what the skill set of the people is that have those particular you know, assets. So it's sort of a holding pattern. Everybody is in any emergency. You sit and wait, and it's going to blow through here in six hours or so, and then it's cleanup time. And it's during that particular time when the need is there. So yeah. I think all of the health agents uh, are sort of thinking about their restaurants and getting them back open should electricity be uh, mm -hmm. be affected because they immediately have to sometimes are instituting policies that are sort of set in motion as soon as the electricity goes off and others have to get into those restaurants one at a time so there needs to be some two-legged assets to go help them and our staff uh, the sanitarians will be mobilized to do that if necessary we also, through the Public Health Emergency Grant, we have executed a number of uh, mutual aid among health agents. So health agents that can leave one jurisdiction and actually exercise their authority in another jurisdiction. Those memorandums for a number of times have already been worked out. There's still some that haven't, and after this storm, we'll probably make the case that, gee, maybe we ought to dust that idea off again, folks and do it, so we'll probably be pursuing those towns that haven't quite got them together yet. Particularly since there looks like there's another couple of storms um, yeah. organizing Fiona right behind. Fiona is out there. Yeah, Fiona. Yeah. And and Fiona sounds awesome. It. Just the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a character in the book. Yes, I know. <laughs> it was a witch for you. Yeah. No, George, is there a place where tomorrow and during the event uh, people may be able to go and get more information on the shelters and those types of things. The REPC actually has a website. I believe it's REPC.org. So they'll be able to see what the newest news is on there. And uh, as far as what shelters are open, they, of course, won't make that decision. They won't pull that trigger because it costs money to open right. those shelters. Right. Uh, uh, that has to be balanced against how quick do you get people to the shelters, that being the support staff, to the shelters before harm's way comes. So they're, they're already in position with their assets. So I think what's going on now is everybody saying, hey, where are the keys to that? You know, let's make sure who opens that door, right. let's put them on notice. So everybody's sort of like at that yellow stage where they're saying, okay, let's just make sure we have all the connections. The next stage will probably be tomorrow, midday, when they they say, okay, it's kind of looking like we're going to have to exercise these beyond just knowing where they are. And then, of course, the Red Cross is involved, and uh, the CERT teams are involved. And, uh, it's a level of coordination that gets better as we go. So. And the REPC, as a board, kind of makes that call. Yes, the Regional Emergency Planning Committee has an executive board which I sit on, a fire chief sits on, police chief, there's a couple other members. Of the American Ridge Cross sits on yeah. that. And they look at all the information and decide whether to pull the trigger or not. Once they do, then it's set in motion. It, it, and I think that that's the, at that point, people have to recognize this is not instant. There's a 48-hour lag time between the point of mo the time the mobilization starts and the time that they're fully operational. Well, hopefully it's 24 hours, but you're right. It's not like so the What, what I'm getting at is that individuals uh, who are yes. affected by this, which would be the population, have to pay attention to the warnings that we're giving them about having yeah. water oh, and, and having food and having uh, and making sure that you know, their cars are full of you know, they have gas in it, that they have batteries, and they have right. all of those things that would help them get through you know, that initial period. Right. Until you know, until you are fully operational. Right. I think that uh, the past two years, with some of the incidents that have occurred, have woken people up to the fact that, gee, you know, I really ought to have at least rudimentary emergency preparedness here, mm -hmm. so that 
uh, have the water, have the food. We've had a couple incidents lately which make people think, gee, what about the water? Maybe I, you know, what am I going to do about water? It's very, a lot of it's very simple. Yeah. It's just things we've lost touch with that Cape Codders used to know just and they just shrug their shoulders and say, yeah, another one's coming. Yeah, my wife made me buy one of those battery operators, one of those right. cigarette lighters, coffee pot uh, right. things last year. So that's, yeah. uh, you know, I... I well, that, she has her priorities, right? right. right. Yeah. <laughs> for those who are... It's, it's really for those who are more unable to take care of themselves in those situations. Because right. it's the folks who can't get out that need the medication or can't get out to do this. So we're trusting and hoping that people who are able-bodied and can boil water on their own and uh, have at least a couple days' worth of dry goods supplies set aside and well, crank up the barbie and get the, mm -hmm. take the I meat out of the fridge. If people have neighbors that, you know, that yeah. they know are you know, elderly or infirm, you know, they, should, they, should reach out. they should reach out and at least check them out. Because Absolutely. They, and, and, mm -hmm. the, and the other part is that uh, I know that the REPC had made a lot of effort to identify people that you know that are known to be uh, you know let's say uh, to be infirm or frail, so that uh, they would you know they would establish some priority of effort. To support yeah, so that's system. a continuing effort yeah. in the towns. Because every time we go through an exercise, we find maybe one more group that oh you know we had not considered this particular association which has contacts with mm -hmm. their folks who are infirm or you know bedridden or don't get out of the house. So yeah, it, it steadily improves because the communication is steadily improving. But when these <coughs> events happen, it precipitates even a, a better sort of pulling together of it and saying, okay, next time we should think about this. And hopefully we've got all the big next times we should have thought about or think about this. We've got the big ones out of the way, but still, it's you know, always now... You know, trailers with pre-positioned supplies places for the Red Cross or for the helpers or for the dark teams that are taking care of the, the pets, things like that. Those are all the big things that have really been taken care of. Now it's just, uh, you know, well, we didn't think of um, the folks <coughs> who you know, lost electricity. Even folks now, you know, you think. How many people are out of communication when there's no electricity? Right. Well, you, you, right. people should have an analog phone hidden well, someplace in the house. But because most it, people don't. Most people don't. And if they did, they're going to pull it out and say, ready to do this? Many ready young people don't have anything but this. Right. Yeah, right. 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 You know, of course, that, that's a blessing in a way because the cell phone stays, it stays right. open, providing that tower has power. Right. right. And that's the right. health agents, by the way, this morning had their, they do every week a radio exercise mm -hmm. for communication. And they just had one this morning, and all of them are pretty much, that's the chatter about, you know, sort of preparing and get ready. And who knows what will happen. For health agents, it's basically after Hurricane during this particular time of the year. This is the last big weekend for businesses. Yeah, we have a shoulder season. The last thing you want to do is have them down longer than they have to be. So it's getting the restaurants back up, getting the hospitality industry back up. And that the health agents need some support in, in some times because you have to get in the places, confirm the food has been stored cold, confirm what has to be thrown out, which can, which can be served. Uh, and each storm goes by, more and more restaurants get that generator or, you know, switch their cooking to gas or one or the other, something to get them through crises like that. So. Now, one of the things I'd like to ask you to think about is that once we get through this season, uh, I think it would be useful for you to come back and give us an after action report as to what you know yeah. what lessons we learned and uh, what we could do going you know, say going, uh, what we should do next year as far as you know, as far as what we learned this year. I remember when we had that uh, that Christmas and uh, the winter anomaly mm -hmm. several yeah. years ago. We learned a lot about don't keep queuing yeah. the, uh, the, the radio the queuing the radio which meant that uh, you went into that cycle and you hit yep, the trunking system. Right, so, you know, and that was an important thing to learn, but uh, and when we go through these actual exercises, it always seems to me that we learn a little bit more, and I think that's something that we, you know, we should plan to share with people so that uh, they have the benefit of, you know, of what we learned, and it's not just within the emergency planning group, but is, you know, the, the population at large knows about it. Well, with the sole institution of the ICS system, which, which, gets better every time we go. 
there is now a whole evaluation process. So the after action reports are generally done on any exercise. And what's really interesting is because some of the funding is tied to exercises and successful exercises, and those successful exercises are only documented by after action reports, you start to see almost on any incident, anything from a small clinic to a you know, restaurant closing because it's ended up, all of those start having ICS, instant reports, and then afterwards an after action report. So, and they're getting better at filling out the paperwork. There is a string of paperwork. Well, right, documentation is an important part of federal government. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so say if there's a storm, and um, you know, I've been fortunate enough uh, where I've been in even that storm seven years ago, we were the little island that um, actually had its power come up first. And I think it was because we had the pump station, right. you know, not far from our house. And um, so uh, that was sort of like a, um, an open kitchen that morning. I mean, all, all neighbors and, and took That's showers. And, nice. yeah, I had, it, and it was very nice. It was a very community thing. And I, it showers, makes me happy. You know, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm really happy. Nice. It, you know, all that is fun. Um, uh, but say if I'm at home and uh, I'm okay, and uh, and I know this happened in snowstorms. I actually called people who I knew were older and way into the woods. You know, they, you know those roads that go in. Uh, there is there a place for for say someone like me? And I said I'm okay. I've got a car. I'm, and I could go somewhere to a center. Will there be uh, places where I could say you know is is there like a a list of people you want me to call just to make sure they're okay? Are those things been sort of thought out of? Well, okay. says that. The red, I know the red, but well, I mean, the red Cross does, but in the event that you believe that you are generally okay in these kind of events, right. then I think the best way to channel your assets and mm -hmm. availability is through a volunteer organization. Right. Either sign up with uh, NRC or CERT or American Red, Red Cross, Cross and say, look, I am available. At, yeah, I'm one of those people yeah, who will be willing to do yeah, in an emergency. Yeah, call on to, this and, yeah, and I'll be able to. Because that's where the the MAC, the Multi-Agency Coordination Center is. In the MAC, you have the electric company, you have the Red Cross rep, you have mm -hmm. REPC rep, all the police, mm -hmm. fire. They all know what their assets are. Right. And it should somebody call in and say, you know, well, fleet police call in and say, geez, you know, we have five, five houses here. Totally, the streets blocked off. Whatever, we really could just use somebody bring out mail to these, these couples that are in there, the elderly couple. Mm -hmm. Then in the map would be a listing of the assets and say, yeah, we have this and this available here. Boom. And these then people start are talking about. Right. So, so if anybody wants to even get on that list now, they could call one of those agencies and say, in the yeah, event of something, sure, I would sure. be one of those willing people yeah, sure uh, with now, these storms coming some through. Of them, some of them, and rightfully so, you're a fine, upstanding person and look like it, act like it, so, so you are. Uh, but they need to, prior to an event, make sure, sure that they, you're not, I am upstanding. you know, a That's right. you Jack the Ripper. Process. Yes. 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 You yes. Know, I have to expose my true self. Right? Yes. <laughs> we do, for instance, on all our MRC, Corey checks. Right. So you I can't call the MRC and say, gee, okay, I've never been to you before, but I'm a doctor and I can do this. Yeah. You know, and I, I'd be yeah. willing to do anything you want. I'm dying yeah. to go That's with right. My, I'm dying to go with my, with my eyes. <laughs> and uh, so there's a process by which in a non-emergency situation, people are checked out. They're okay. true whatever or no. Their skill sets are cataloged and right. they say fine. Well, there's, yeah. a, there's a the well, standard good, is a Corey it's, you know, yeah. for the Red Cross, as I remember. And there's also uh, that you come in and they bet you out in person. Sure. So uh, and it, every volunteer organization, if they don't do that, shame on them because yeah. you never know yeah. who yeah. you could be getting. So the Corey is the first part, but the skill set, your abilities to you know do things, your assets, things like that, that's cataloged so they know what they are. But I might suggest you know, I'm on the board of the American Red Cross, so it must be, um, well, you, are you, you don't have to be too afraid of me. Okay. <laughs> no, I think that's a good message, because yeah. people do want to volunteer, yes. especially when these things happen. They really want to, you yeah. know, and then they're disappointed when they don't get the call for Saturday or right. whatever. 
So and you now just they have know to know that if you are interested, please do it, do it ahead do of it. time. Do it ahead of time. You get yourself in the queue, so to speak. Right. And, and then we can you know, avail it's... ourselves. And they first. usually train the people. It, it, it's not very long training unless it's cert, and that's a mm -hmm. pretty intensive training. Mm -hmm. But at least so train the, acronym name, acronym name. Uh, the citizens, emergency, emergency response, response team. team. So that's a cert, and different towns have them associated with police or not associated with police. Is that, uh, which one does... Uh, There's a county Cummings, cert. Jim Cummings, uh, yeah. and I think Dave Vieira is the one. Dave Vieira actually right. trains a number of the right. cert teams throughout the Cape. So if they called uh, Jim Cummings' office or called the sheriff, yeah. they could get onto that team. If they called your office, you could make suggestions as to what, you know, sure. where they could contact. And well, because many people are hooked up with uh, a number of different agencies. Yeah. And all we need to do when you do that with these sort of many uh, faster people is let the association know which one you would go to first. You know, we have MRCs within towns where people say, I only go to my town. And then there's other ones that say, I'll go to any town. Mm -hmm. And we have same with American Red Cross. So we really would need to know the availability status at any time. Usually that's verified. For instance, right now, our MRC, your county MRC, all of the folks who would ever be mobilized have been put on that first level, what's your availability, please get back to me. So we now know who's available. Then it's filtered down through, okay, how many doctors, nurses, do we need pharmacists, do we need this, do we need that? and they're all ready to go. And the next thing is, okay, what, what day are they going to be needed? And then they can be notified. And that's a lot of work that happens in the background, but you know, the response just can't be thrown together. No, we also run, uh, I know Sean is a, is a teacher at some of the ICS programs yes. on the Cape, and uh, I, we, I try to tell the elected officials on the Cape that it's an important part of uh, their opportunity to learn how the system works if they would participate in some of the trainings that we offer. I know you can get it online, but if they could avail themselves of the, you know, the in-person training uh, that, you know, the kind Even of at the fire training academy, the fire training academy it, it, uh, it's stuff. one that would prepare you not to step in and take over, perhaps, but to have a complete understanding of how the system works so you can be the most supportive you can, and also make sure that the person that's, uh, you know, that, that is indeed are, you know, running it is getting the support that they right. need in order to make the, make the event successful. Um, so, in any way, I think I would I would recommend that to any elected official who you know who is interested in in finding out more how you know, what, the, what the nuts and bolts are and how they could sort of fit, you know, fit in with it. Well, hopefully, we won't need it. That's right. Week, that's right. right. Hope you'll be nice That's right. 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 Hold that thought. That's okay. Right. So, with that, uh, well, thank I, you for I, coming in. Thank you. you. I want to ask if you have any questions about the um, exact exactly. change. Thank you. I do not. Okay. Just on, on that note, before George leaves, uh, uh, Sean did say he would be available to come to the assembly and basically give the same update. So maybe, and since it's not on their agenda, you could do that under commissioner's communication. Yes, yeah, so and he may have a little bit more update since the RDC meeting is going on right now. Going okay. on there. You think he'd be over there by four? Yeah, he said he, uh, I believe well, he, said he would. Open. Yeah. Okay, so. great. I'll, make, I'll, I'll, make, sure, I'll make that happen. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right, I'll take a motion. Yes, I uh, move that we accept um, the summary of action. Thank you. And I, uh, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, okay. I have another uh, vote, um, and that is since we are not meeting next week, that is to authorize the county administrator and our assistant county administrator to sign all the warrants, payroll, accounts payable, personnel, and other matters that would come before the Marshall County Commissioners for the week of September 6th through September 11th, 2010. Um, Yes, so I will move that. Well, you're not here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, anything else? I uh, just wanted to know that we received a nice note of thanks from Doris Epstein of the Falmouth League of Women Voters for the excellent job that we did on the um, uh, uh, Cooperative Extension Tour a few weeks oh, ago. Yes. Right. So um, there's that. And I did want to announce that there um, will be an election for the Brunswick County Retirement Board. One of the positions, an elected position, is up this year. And I believe um, anyone who is interested in running for that position 
would have to get their ballot information in to retirement by October 4th, 2010, and these notices will be posted in all of our county buildings um, if people are interested in that. Do you have all our notices posted outside now for... Um... Right, well, the bulletin boards are in. John is in the process of uh, putting in the electricity and... Um, once the bulletin boards will be posted, they'll be on the lit bulletin board. Right now, we're posting them in the windows. On, in the windows. I fully intend to come here at 3:30 in the morning. Yes. You should, and you'll be able to see it. The lights are, you know, the light is on. And we'll give a report. See it. And I'm going to invite the person in the state that set this up to come down and look at it too. And I'll take his picture if he ever it's shows dog. up. The dog. The, the division of open government. I just saw his name, and I can't think. I, don't know. I, I do know his name, but I just can't think of it. Dog. Dog. Dog is the office, Division of Open Government. Isn't that the reverse of God? <laughs> it is. Uh, okay. Well, it, it was nice to point that out, but it didn't help. <laughs> okay, no. got it. Oh, I did want to mention two things. Uh, the CMED letters uh, yes. for the uh, creation of the CMED board went out, and they went to the Cape Head, News, Cape Head Healthcare, and to the Fire Chiefs Association, which Sheila and I were at the other day. So that started, and on Friday I'm going to send out all of the vegetation management letters. I've heard back from just about everybody. There's maybe two uh, out there who are still checking with their superiors. Mark Begley was one, and a uh, uh, gentleman from DEP, Mr. Moran. Uh, I have to get back to him. But I'm going to send all the letters, and we'll come to you on the 15th and pull the committee together and we'll okay. pick a date. I mean, we do have to do some questions. We do have to set a charge for that committee. We we have the draft. I will send that back around because it's been a couple of weeks, yeah. and you guys can take a look at it, and then you can kind of finalize. Okay. And may I ask what's going on with the NSTAR ad hoc committee? That's the one I'm talking about. Vegetation oh, management. Oh, the vegetation. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I know. It's strength with vegetables. Yeah. And all right, so that's. So there's like two that I'm waiting to get here back from mostly everybody else. I think is the same. Is okay. Okay. Now I did get a le certified letter. Uh, from uh, the Conservation Law Foundation, but the sense of it is that we were just being put on notice that... Uh, it's the pre-notice pre thing, right. yeah, and that so you had already heard about right. in the so executive until we, get, uh, until we are included in the suit, this is just something that's... Uh, I think what we would do is, as we've talked about, and we did this in an executive session, so I want to be a little careful, um, on our meeting on the 15th, we would set aside some time in open session to talk about the, the uh, workshops, process and put, pulling all that together, and then in executive session we would talk about um, the strategy the with respect to the litigation. Okay, and, and of course we would announce what, why, why we were going into executive session. Yes. Yeah, you have to declare that nowadays, yes. Okay, well, do we have anything else? Who's going okay. to the assembly? I don't have anything else. Okay, I'll, I'll plan to go to the assembly. Okay. Um. Uh, I, I, I may, I, I probably should, just with this um, <clears throat> delegate thing. Um, it, okay. it <laughs> I actually think Bill is uh, in a good position to handle that. We, he, he's, I've talked to Scott, he's talked to Scott. So. Okay. Um, two things at the assembly. George, oh, Sean is going to be there. Darlene will also be there because they're taking up the resolution. She'll be available to answer any questions. It's a resolution, so they didn't need a hearing. That's good. Good. All right. So I will not attend. And uh, you welcome to come. I may if I can. If, I can. if you're in the neighborhood, you know, if I'm in the neighborhood, I, I definitely will stop by. Yeah. Uh, does she have something else? Uh, no. She needs something. Oh, okay. okay. oh, she needs something. Okay. All right. Yeah, so with that, I would uh, make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Did you need anything before? Okay. See Mark. Kind of okay. Right. Right. okay um, There's a motion on the floor to adjourn. Uh, please. Um, Excellent. Nice.